Do you have wishes and don't know for which characters would be the most profitable to spend them on? Do you want to get a character that will be the most useful for your account? Now I'll tell you about the best characters that the community has recognized. I think that you can play whoever you want, there are no weak characters in the game, but... There are characters that can significantly make the gameplay easier. If I don't mention someone, please let me know in the comments. Watch video until the end, because it will definitely not be superfluous to know about such characters. I'll just start with a broken character. Most likely you have heard about his power, but what is it? After all, when he just came out, everyone said that he was even worse than 4 star character, namely Sucrose. And now he is at the top of all tier lists. Let's start with the fact that the characters with Animo element are convenient in themselves. Kazuha with a very cheap build show itself better than any praise. It will significantly increase the damage of the character whose element he managed to swirl. All this is achieved with the help of a passive talent and a set of artifacts by the Saint Venera, which is considered the best for him. To get the most out of Kazuha, you should look for artifacts for Animo Boy only from Elemental Mastery, but he will not refuse energy recharge either. Therefore, the best weapon option for Kazuha would be the Pavonius Sword. In terms of efficiency, he will bypass even his signature weapon, but why is the Pavonius Sword so good on Kazuha? Upon triggering a swirl reaction, Kazuha will grant teammates a 0.04% elemental damage bonus to their element, for every point of elemental mastery Kazuha possesses for 8 seconds. At level 90, the Kazuha signature weapon grants us 198 elemental mastery. This is about plus 8% damage if you don't take into account the substats of the weapon. This is still not a guide for Kazuha, but I'll say in short. Pavonius Sword gives an elemental burst to all party members on cooldown, while Kazuha can cast it with a very low crit rate. Science the elemental skill is too many times hit the enemy, thereby activating the passive of the sword. Someday I'll tell you more about here. Kazuha also unlock vertical gameplay, after all, when using an elemental skill you can knock down an attack and be out of reach of opponents, which significantly increases survivability. He will show itself perfectly without constellations, but the second constellation is broken and if you have the desire and the opportunity, get it. This constellation is considered to be one of the strongest constellations among all the characters. At the time when I'm recording this video, Yelan was announced in the second half banners of update 2.4. It's no secret that 4 star character Sin Chu is a very in demand, so many players asked for a new replacement. According to statistics, 70% of players use Shin Chu when passing through the abyss. So, here Yelan is a very similar character to Shin Chu, but there are a lot of differences. Damage that Yelan will deal depends on HP, which means that Bennett may not be used for she. After all, now independence from Bennett is a virtue. <laughs> With help of her passive talent, during the elemental burst, damage of active character becomes stronger over time, up to 50% increased damage. Since she is a Hydro Applicator, she needs an elemental burst on cooldown. These are my favorite weapons. Elegy of the End or Pavonius Bow. But I still prefer the second option. Even though I have 3rd refinement rank Elegy of the End, Collect about 200 energy recharge and a set of artifacts emblem of severed fate for her full implementation. You don't even have to worry about the teams for her. All passes that require Shin Chu can be used for Yelan. Strength is certainly good, but I can't help but notice how convenient it is to move around the open world with her. Mere presence Yelan on your account greatly simplifies the selection of teams for passing Abyss. Constellations are not needed, but the second constellation gives a good increase. When Elemental Burst conducts a coordinated attack, 
it will fire an additional water arrow that will deal 14% of Yelan's max HP as Hydra damage. This effect can trigger it once every 1.8 seconds. With this constellation, damage will increase well, and Hydra status will be more stable hold on the enemies. How wonderful it's to have a Geo Archon on your account. All who manage to become his owner will understand me. With Morax you feel invulnerable, because his shield is considered the most durable in the game. Many joke that they forgot how to dodge, because when there is Chun-Li in a party, this is not necessary. Even with 20,000 HP, shield is already pretty good, but if you build Zhongli completely in HP and achieve 40-45,000 HP, then shield will withstand anything. And if you are close to the enemy, shield will reduce any resistance by 20%, which increases the damage of your active character. Hmm, such a strong ability should have drawbacks. Probably the cooldown is too long or I don't know. But no. Shield lasts 18 seconds with a cooldown of 12. I.e. you can keep it permanently. This is what I call protect me from the world. <laughs> if he had only this one ability, he would already be in great demand. But that's not all. With help elemental burst, you can not only cast solid damage, but also make a statue of opponents. In this state, they will not even be able to move. How does it help to relax a little on the difficult floors of the abyss? Junli has a lot of build options, which will take too long to talk about. But basically, he is given all the artifacts on HP and 3 star weapon are also on HP. He doesn't need constellations either. This character is considered such that the constellations give almost nothing. How cool it is when a character can show himself as much as possible without constellations. Of course, there is a second constellation, which allows you to give a shield also in co-op, but if you don't have friends, like me, it's useless. I often hear how people say, if you lost in Vicious and instead of an event character you got Mona, then you won. And I partially agree with this, but still, I would like to get those characters that you want. But Mona is really a very good character and is perfect for the role of a support. I noticed that many players don't quite understand how her elemental burst works. In short, while the omen hangs on opponents, your active character will hit more, and on frozen opponents or if they have a shield, the elemental burst can last many times longer. I'm sure if you haven't played as Mona, you probably didn't understand anything. If you still won't understand how her elemental burst works, then on YouTube there are many detailed guides and I go through superficially. Mona can use Codex Favonia for energy recharge, as her elemental burst is very expensive, well, or a 3 star weapon thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer's weapon. From the artifacts I recommend Tenacity of the Millilith. Then she will buff your team better. I know that her way of moving is not very convenient in battles, but if you get used to it, then this is only an advantage. If you don't have a main damage dealer yet and you are looking for someone who can perfectly stand up for this role, Hutao is your choice. No wonder this character is considered one of the most powerful in the game. If you spend enough time and resources, to upgrade and build her, you won't regret it. Since Hu Tao can easily close the last floors of the abyss, and as we know, this is the most difficult content in the game. Thus, in a world exploration, she will show itself perfectly. If you want to maximize her damage, you need to have at least one Hydro Applicator in your party. But the same Shinchu or Yelan can handle it alone. She has a passive talent. When Hu Tao's HP is equal to or less than 50%, her pyro damage bonus is increased by 33%. Therefore, they don't take a character who heals her HP. And people prefer to use shields. But if you don't have stuff of Homa, then this is of course a pleasant increase in damage, but not so critical. 
However, I still recommend keeping Hu Tao's HP below 50% and using other character's shields to unlock her full potential. She plays with her charge attack, which is not very convenient if you don't have the first constellation. Is this constellation allows you to use Hu Tao's charge attacks without stamina and greatly increases comfort of the game. Since she is the main DPS, she wants all talents upgraded to level 10. Also, with her abilities, she can give all party members 12% crit rate, except for herself. If you upgrade and build this girl well, you will definitely not be disappointed. As you can see, all these characters are popular, because after all, this is a list of some of the best in this game. If you want the same list, but from unpopular characters, then let me know in the comments. If you are still here, then you like this video, why not like and subscribe, so as not to lose my videos. But I don't say goodbye to you. See you later.